Cross it! Hey everybody, Dr. O here. So in this video I'm going to run through the different joint movements. Obviously doing the movements and seeing the movements are going to be uh, better than just looking at the images, but this is the best we have here. So I'm going to walk through each of them so you at least have a general idea of what's going on. So I have, first of all, the first few images here are going to involve flexion or extension. So they are called angular movements. That's not a huge deal, but uh, so flexion is any time you decrease the angle between uh, at a joint between two bones, two structures, and extension is any time you increase it. So for example, if your arms are straight, they're at a 180 degree angle. So if you bend your elbows like you're like you're flexing here, that's going to be flexion and straightening back out will be extension. So the best examples I can think of, I like I could think of sitting versus standing. So when you sit, you have a flex your your hips are flexed and your knees are flexed. When you stand up, your hips and knees are both in extension. So flexion decreasing the angle between two structures, bringing them closer together, extension increasing the angle between them and taking them farther apart. All right, so that's flexion and extension. Uh, a couple more examples here. So here we see neck, flexion, extension. Now the reason I like to point out this image here is you'll notice this book calls it flexion and extension. So flexion when you tuck your chin to your chest, extension when you look up at the ceiling. So that's totally fine. But some sources are going to call, uh, call any extension beyond the anatomical position, they're going to call it hyperextension. So I don't. I just want you to know that if you if you see a picture like this and you see this looking up at the ceiling as hyperextended, I guess it's acceptable, but clinically I don't like it because when I think of a hyperextended joint, I think of one extended beyond its normal physiological range, not a normal movement. So looking up at the ceiling, there's nothing wrong with that. So, so to me, this is flexion and extension, but I just want to make sure you understand that you might see any extension beyond the anatomical position called hyperextension. So here we see flexion and extension of the cervical spine. Uh, here we see flexion and extension of of the trunk as well. So those are all examples of flexion and extension. Uh, next we have on the left hand side here we have abduction and adduction. So here's how I remember these two terms. Abduction I will often say abduction, so you know which one I'm talking about. Abduction, think about abduct. If you abduct something, you take it away. So abduction is taking away from the midline. So like here when I have my fingers together, if I abduct them, I take them away from the center of my hand. So abduction means taking away from the midline. Adduction or ADD, you're adding it back. So that's how I remember. think abduct, think take away like kidnap. Adduct, think add add to. So I'm adding it to my body. So abduction, take away. Adduction, bring back towards the midline. Uh, the other one you see in here is called circumduction. So circumduction is when you make a circular motion with your with your upper or lower limb without any rotation. So imagine like drawing a big circle on a chalkboard or in the air. That would be circumduction. So a circular movement, but not with rotation of any of the joints. All right, so that's abduction, adduction, and circumduction. Uh, next we have rotation. So rotation of the trunk and the, and the neck and the spine, you're just going to usually say left and right rotation. Just remember you're talking about the, the patient's lefts and rights. But with limbs, you're going to use terms like medial and lateral rotation. So medial rotation means to turn the structure in towards the midline, also known as internal rotation rotation, so some sources will use that term. Lateral rotation means you're going to take something away from the midline, so that's going to also be called external rotation. So we have just regular rotation of like the neck and, and trunk, and then with limbs we have medial or internal rotation versus lateral or external rotation. Uh, next we have pronation and supination. This is kind of a, so I can internally and externally rotate my shoulders, uh, but this is happening at the elbow. So pronation and supination, uh, just a couple things to start. Number one, when you're in the anatomical position with your palms facing forward, you would be in the supinated position. So also, here's how I remember them. If you're going to make a bowl of soup with your hands, they are supinated. So soup, supinated uh, bowl of soup with the hands. Pronation, I think of taking a drink. So if you're going to take a drink, I have my coffee right here. So if I take a drink, I pronated my forearm to do that. So pronation, think drink. Supination, think bowl of soup. So pronation versus supination. 
Next, we have dorsiflexion or plantar flexion. This is a special type of flexion and extension that occurs at the ankle. So here's, I remember, here's I remember this, plantar flexion. You plant your toes into the ground. So if you're walking on your tippy toes, you are in the plantar flexed position. Dorsiflexion is when you're walking on your heels. I'm doing it myself. You've seen me wiggling around. So dorsiflexion, you have me walking on your heels. So walking on your tippy toes, that's plantar flexion. Walking on your heels, that's dorsiflexion. Next, we have inversion and eversion. This would be kind of so rolling your ankle medial or laterally. So inversion means you're turning the sole of your foot medially in towards the, towards the mass of your body. Eversion, which is hard to do, right? If you roll your ankles or if you just like you're sitting with your legs kind of spread and your, and your, and your, your uh, um, weight is on the side of your feet, that's going to be inversion. The soles of your feet are turned medially. Eversion, the soles of your feet are turned laterally. That's much more stressful. It's harder to get into that position. So these terms are really important when you look at movements associated, with, especially if you sprain an ankle. So almost all the time, they're going to be inversion sprains. You've all heard someone talking about rolling an ankle. Eversion sprains are a lot more complicated, so I won't go into all the details there, but uh, a lot of times if you're going to have an eversion sprain, you're also going to damage the knee or do something else. So that's inversion versus eversion. Next, we have protraction versus retraction. So protraction means to move something forward. Like here, he's protracting his mandible. He's jutting his mandible out. Retraction means backwards. So I like to think about like if someone tells you to sit up straight, they're actually telling you to retract your shoulders and re retract your scapula. So protraction moves something forward. Retraction moves something back or posteriorly. Elevation versus depression. So if I'm boring you and you have a big yawn here, you're going to be depressing your mandible by opening, opening your mouth wide. Elevation means to raise something up superiorly. Depression means to lower it inferiorly. So shrugging my shoulders, I'm elevating my shoulders. That's elevation versus depression. All right, uh, last one here we have is opposition. So uh, one of the things that makes you know humans or and animals like us special is that we have opposable thumbs. I've, I'm sure you've heard that term. So I like to say really our massive prefrontal lobe and our opposable thumbs are the two uh, main advantages that we have as a species. So opposition means you can reach your thumb across to the palm of your hand. A lot of times we'll say to reach your thumb towards your pinky, but opposition means to reach your thumb across the palm of your hand. And then so you don't see this term very often, but actually returning it. So if you oppose your thumb across your palm or towards your pinky finger, um, that's called opposition. Bringing it back is called reposition. So not a big deal, but uh, this matters so much because our opposable thumbs allow us to grasp, thing and grasp things and use tools. So, okay, so those are all the the key, key joint movements you need to know for this class. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.